If you grew up with Avatar The Last Airbender, like I did, then you probably have really fond memories sitting in front of the TV marveling over the pretty art and the fun fights and the super cool music. But any adult nowadays who grew up with this show and who wants to talk about it probably doesn't talk about the pretty art or the crazy fights or the super cool music. No, more than anything else, people who have watched this show talk about its lessons. Avatar taught more kids in the early 2000s about basic morality and being kind to one another than school did. But being kind isn't the only thing that it taught. The show gave kids examples of characters dealing with temptations, emotions, family troubles, despair, hope, and victory. And of course, those characters dealt with the core theme running throughout the entire show, destiny. In book three, Aang finds a firebending teacher in Zuko, of all people, who up to that point had been trying to hunt him down and capture him for the Fire Nation. Zuko realized the error of his ways and tried to do something different. Hello, Zuko here. But Aang is nervous about firebending, since the last time he tried it, he just hurt Katara. So instead of trying to teach him, Zuko just gives a demonstration. But there's a problem. All of a sudden, his powers don't really work anymore. He had given up the anger of his past, which fueled his firebending, and now that that's gone, all of his power was too. Zuko and Aang now both needed training, so they decided to look for an alternative. Toph told them to go and find firebending training from the original masters, the dragons, and the only place they knew of that had a possibility of having dragons was the Sun Warrior Temple. So even though they thought that it might be abandoned, they went to the Sun Warrior Temple anyway. They found a chamber there with statues depicting the dragon dance, and copying the statues, they both unlocked the treasure in the room and set off a trap. They were trapped and captured by the Sun Warriors, who surprisingly were still around. Instead of getting punished for stealing, however, they explain that Aang is the Avatar, and he needs to learn from the Firebending Masters. So they're taken to a ceremony lair. They're made to carry the first fire to the Firebending Masters and present it to them. If the Masters judge them worthy, they'll teach them Firebending. If they don't, Zuko and Aang will be dinner. Aang's nerves make his fire go out, and he accidentally makes Zuko's go out too, so they think that they're doomed. But when the dragons actually come out and fly around them, they perform the dragon dance that they had just learned, and they show their worthiness, after which the dragons blow fire all around them in amazing colors. This is such a beautiful scene, and it ends in Zuko realizing something profound about his destiny. After coming down from the dragon platform, Zuko says, That's why my firebending was so weak before. Because for so many years, hunting you was my drive. It was my purpose. So when I joined you, I lost sight of my inner fire. But now I have a new drive. I have to help you defeat my father and restore balance to the world. Isn't that interesting? Zuko had an old drive to hunt the Avatar, but he gave that one up so he could defeat his father and restore balance to the world. He started his journey with a finite goal, to capture the Avatar. It was an ambitious goal that nobody thought could be reached. And now he's traded it for a finite goal to save the world, which is also an ambitious goal that nobody thought could be reached. So what's the difference? It seems Zuko recognizes the importance of having virtuous goals. Instead of pursuing the selfish goal of hunting an innocent child for the sake of his own glory, he decides to pursue a selfless goal of stopping his father and saving the world. Zuko said that his drive was to hunt the Avatar, but he also said it was his purpose, right? So, let's think about that. In the event that he fails to capture the Avatar, he's failed to complete his purpose, so wouldn't that make him worthless? Maybe so. His father certainly thought so. But even in the event where he actually captures the Avatar, then that goal is complete, and now he no longer has this purpose to capture the Avatar. So wouldn't he then be equally worthless? His purpose would have come to an end, and his father wouldn't have needed him anymore. So, succeed or fail, Zuko's first destiny always ends in worthlessness. But anyone who has seen the show knows that Zuko's story is about finding his true destiny, not one that was put on him by another person. And this ceremony is the exact time when that destiny is finally revealed. He faced danger and possible death at the hands of the Dragon Masters. He was granted visions of true fire, and his purpose was changed forever. We know of someone in real life who had a similar story, don't we? The Apostle Paul. He said in Acts 22, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but raised in this city. I was educated at the feet of Gamaliel in strict conformity to the law of our fathers. I am just as zealous for God as any of you here today. I persecuted this way, 
Christians, even to the death, detaining both men and women and throwing them into prison, as the high priest and the whole council can testify about me. I even obtained letters from them to their brothers in Damascus, and I was on my way to apprehend these people and bring them to Jerusalem to be punished. So as Zuko's purpose had been to hunt the Avatar, so too Paul's purpose had been to hunt Christians. But then he says, About noon I was approaching Damascus. Suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they could not understand the voice of the one speaking to me. Then I asked, What should I do, Lord? Get up and go into Damascus, he told me. There you will be told all that you have been appointed to do. The God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear his voice. You will be his witness to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. Remember, Zuko had been told by human authority that his destiny was to find and eradicate the Avatar. He had a spiritual encounter that changed his mind, and he ultimately ended up joining the team of the one he was sent to persecute. And Paul said he had been told by human authority that his destiny was to find and eradicate the Christians. He had a spiritual encounter that changed his mind, and he ultimately ended up joining the team of the ones he was sent to persecute. There's no denying that these stories are telling somewhat of the same truth. Now, it's kind of ridiculous to say that a 2000s kids show and a 2,000-year-old book can be telling the same story, but it actually goes even deeper than that. After the ceremony, Aang too had a new understanding of firebending. Previously, he thought firebending was just about destruction, but then he saw that it was energy and life. And when he explained his new purpose to Aang, Zuko said, That's why my firebending was so weak before, because for so many years, hunting you was my drive. Zuko had been driven by anger and destruction, and once he gave that up, his inner fire was diminished. But then he understood the life and energy that fire really is. So he regained his ability, and much more, because he had a noble purpose. And then he said the most important line in the episode to the chief of the Sun Warriors. It's like the sun, but inside of you. Do you guys realize this? The sun is a symbol of life and energy. The Fire Nation up to that point had thought of fire as just a tool to gain power and to burn things. But they forgot that the sun that they lived under was made of fire too, and it was all about life and energy. Instead of Zuko's inner fire being fueled by destruction and anger, it was now being fueled by life and peace. He has the sun inside himself, like he said. In a very real sense, the Zuko that went up those stairs and the Zuko that came down those stairs are not the same person. There's been a transformation. He became a new person and shook off the false destiny put on him by his father. For similarity, let's look back at Paul again. When he became a true follower of God, the priest Ananias said to him, And now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. The washing away of sins, baptism, represents becoming a new person, but it's not a baptism of water. John the Baptist, who knew more about baptism than just about anybody, said, I indeed baptize you with water to repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The one John talks about is Jesus, the Son of God, who washes away sins not with water, but with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You can start to see the parallels here, but I have to go one step further. In Acts 2, a group of believers in Jesus gathered together, and suddenly, all of them were granted the ability to speak each other's languages as a sign from God, as it says in verse 4. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Now that's two times the Holy Spirit has been associated with fire. Jesus baptized people with fire, and the Holy Spirit that he gave to the disciples brought with him fire that descended upon them. Paul was given this fiery Holy Spirit, and he put his old ways behind him. He would go on to be stoned, starved, whipped, beaten, shipwrecked, exposed to nature, and left without water, all for the sake of this new inner fire that he had. He even went to his death for it. Some kind of transformation, huh? When you take a deep look at the way that truth actually works in the world, 
you'll start to see how two seemingly opposite things can actually be pointing to the same truth. The difference here is that one's a kid's show and one is a historical account. But just so you don't miss the connection, let's look at them again. A man realizes that his destiny is really just something someone else decided for him, so he gives it up. He goes in search of his true destiny, and submitting himself to a spiritual encounter, he receives a baptism of fire, which turns him into a new person. His previously destructive ways are turned into peaceful ways, and his selfishness is turned into selflessness for others. He goes on to face many dangers with the new confidence this inner fire gives him, and aims to help in saving the world. But he does so by dying to his former self, and becoming a new person in the process. And he never looks back. Anyone who watches Avatar and accepts Zuko's transformation at the hands of the Dragon Masters would see Paul's conversion to Christianity as a natural extension of the same lesson. That lesson being that human-led destiny only leads to worthlessness, but destiny rooted in the truth leads to peace. And this destiny is only reached by dying to our former selves. This is what Christians believe. We point people to the transforming work of Jesus because we know how it changed us, and we know our former selves. Zuko accepted the true fire and found the destiny revealed to him by the Sun Warriors. It's the same for us in the real world, though we'd more likely call ourselves Warriors of the Sun.